Hello, this is James Carney from Scribbler. We're about to interview the teacher Sadier in Manchester at the Deaf Institute. Silencio. About Silencio. Silencio, about Silencio. Well, it came about. Um, first, I had the title, uh, which came about in a church in Spain. I was on tour of Spain. I was touring alone, and um, I visited um, a Spanish town called Zamora, and it's a beautiful small town that has a vast amount of church, very old churches. So that's why I ended up going into a church. And, um, de -dum -de -dum. and at some point there was a moment of complete silence. And that moment was really magical for me. And I realized I had a massive kind of epiphanic uh, realization of a uh, very deep, intimate connectedness, not only with myself, but on the other side also with, um, with the world and the universe. So it was quite a powerful moment for me, which, was, um, which felt wonderful, as well as um, having a healing dimension. I felt, it felt so good, you know, it was like healing somehow. And, um, I had no particular intent at the time I was touring the trip, um, which was my first solo album, and um, I had no particular intent at the time, nor was I thinking about you know an, another record. There I thought, okay, I've got my title, it'll be called Silencio. And, um, and after that, and because of you know, the state of the world as it is today, as it reveals itself to be today, because I think it's been like that for, for decades, really, but now it's just more and more apparent that there, there is a, uh, that there's a big problem, a systemic problem. Um, I thought I wanted to voice that. I felt the need to voice, uh, to, to put a political voice out there in the world of pop music, because it's my field. You know. If I'd been a painter, I would have done it through painting or whatever. But um, so, so, um, and you know, and I somehow could completely link the silencio aspect, the more spiritual aspect of connectedness, with the political aspect of connectedness, and um, and. And that's how Silencio, you know, becomes a, a, a record that has both these aspects, you know, kind of the, the more overtly political and also the, the more spiritual aspect of, of what it is to be human. And, you know, that ties in with the fact that not everything, not every aspect of human life can be sold or bought, you see. And there's a song about fire, for instance. Fire, the inner fire, passion. Being passionate about something, about someone. That's very human, and that's something you can't buy on the internet. You know, and um, so, you know, Silencio is also about that, you know, that there is a sacred aspect to being human which can't be capitalized on. And, and I wanted to, to, my album to reclaim that, you know, and talk about that. <laughs>
album is um, perhaps the most explicitly I've heard you deal deal with these things. You refer to um, you ask who the financial market markets are. You say who are these people? Mm -hmm. On on them, um, it's very direct. It's very clear. I I I suppose. But you have any more on that? Yes, it's um, this particular song is um, is it's not my words directly. I didn't write them. I merely translated the words of um, uh, someone who phoned in on the radio and um, and you know and rented away. So um, and I felt he said things so well. He said it so directly, and I thought. Why don't I hear this more often? He's asking a perfectly legitimate question. You know, we are being governed because it's these guys who decide. You know, the 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 financial uh, what, the rating agencies. Yes. You know. So yes, you're allowed. Ah no no, you're not allowed. Or you're gonna have to borrow money at a much higher price. You're poor, so. You know, and all this sort of mathematics that's going on. So yeah, he asked the question bluntly, and and that very thing means that if we're governed by these people, and we don't choose them, we don't vote for them, you know, well, what's happening to democracy then? Ah, good question. What's happened to democracy? And and I feel everybody should be talking about, you know, the demise of democracy. It's a very serious thing. You know, I, I mean, I value my freedom. I value the fact that I can say what I, can, what I want to say, you know, and I, and, um, I value democracy very highly. I think it's one of the best systems that we've had, you know, and, um, Although we could do better, we could move towards something where we're more um, Im implicated, you know, in in our societal lives. You know, um, I mean, I really, really dread uh, uh, dictatorships. I really dread that, and I know it's happened before, and I know we can. We're moving towards this sort of of. Uh, government, you know, where I can just about say what I, I want to say, but um, I imagine that if I gain too much popularity, then, um, I mean, look at what happened in Russia with um, Pussy Riot, you know, I mean, they're in jail now, and they could be in jail for the rest of their lives, you know, it wouldn't be surprising coming from that government, and that, that totally makes me super, super frightened, you know. And before people get get too um, uh, seized in this, you know, you know, I think we have to speak out and, you know, and go, no, no, we don't accept that. <laughs> to the Jean Renoir film. Absolutely. Can you tell me more about that? Yes, um, <coughs> it's, you know, it's back to that, um, to that responsibility aspect of, um, of democracy and of, you know, a, a system that either works or doesn't work. And um, that film really moved me because it, it revealed um, it, it shows how irresponsible we are. Well, it shows an elite that is acting completely, they're spoiled children, and they're acting completely irresponsibly. Uh, and that's shot in 1939. So um, at the dawn of, of the, the catastrophe that, that happened right after. So um, the way it's shot as well is it's not. It's just a mirror, and it's a mirror that's very loving. He loves humanity, 
and he's just showing, look, you're a baby. You know, when you should, you should grow up, look, look at you. Look how irresponsibly, irresponsible you're, irresponsibly you're behaving. And look at this, the consequences. Look at what you're letting happen, you know. And as I say, it's done with a lot of love. It's not like, I'm superior and you're just an idiot. You know, it's, it's really done cleverly. And, and I, I really saw that. I really saw myself. I saw the irresponsible, um, uh, spoiled, you know, bourgeois girl that I am, you know, in this movie. And, um, and, and I cried for two days after seeing this movie because there was such a mirror, you know, showing such a, a very specific shade of my own humanity and my own irresponsibility that you know and and I feel it's it's to you it's to you it's to everybody you know because we're all doing it we're all implicit you know complicit in this <clears throat> you know by our and but at the same time yes because we have you know cars and washing machines and and internet and blah and and shoes cool shoes and you know, so we're kind of dizzying ourselves and um, and not looking at the elephant that's in the living room. You know. Capitalism, quite uh, quite quite bluntly, you know. It's a, I think most evils of this world, most problems in this world, may they be um, social, uh, labor, you know, the value of work, um, which is work is being devalued, um, environmental. Uh, there's, there's a whole s scale of problems that we're having today and they all derive from the fact that profit is being put in front of human, human I would say more than needs, well-being because we can have well-being we don't need to suffer like this you know and there's more and more suffering because capitalism is gaining and gaining and gaining and gaining and there's a phenomenon going on at the moment that also has been at work for, for decades but now it's more and more apparent is that everything that is uh, public uh, like our schools that are public, our health system, our swimming pools our, you know, a, a whole array of, you know, public workers wor state workers um, although it can be debated that there are too many in certain instances, yes, but it's, it's about, you know, uh, organize, organization also. Um, well, all that, that links us together, that's the, the public sphere, is being also is shrinking and shrinking and, sh and being, being gnawed at by capitalism. A very dangerous trend because that leads to misery that leads to pauperization, I don't know if you say that in English, you know, an impoverishment yes. of, of yes. most people. And, um, and I've seen it, I, I went to South America and I've seen how it is in those countries, for instance, you know, where there's, there's very little public sector, you know, uh, public transportation is another very strong sector that we need, it's a, it's a nerve of society, we need it. And um, 
you know, if we leave that to to private sector, it's going to be hugely expensive, and plus they're going to cut corners, so it's going to be dangerous. And it's what happened to the to the British National Railway system when it was it was privatized, and we had the hugest amounts of accidents, and they had to re-nationalize them. So, you know, and then that's not to mention also the, the financial system, you know, and how that's kind of let loose and, and creating this, this crisis that we, we're all having to pay for, that we're not really responsible for in the first place. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's that that I'm pointing the finger out <coughs> directly. But also, I mean, yes, there's a system and but it's, it's also an awareness and an acceptance that we have to get to. <coughs> so more and more people are becoming aware that, mm, yeah, maybe we need to change the system. More and more people. So that's good, you know, and then at some stage, then some action should come through, you know, and, and I don't think it needs to be uh, violent, particularly. I think if most people are aware of this and have a will to move towards different systems I think people will organize you know differently you know so I don't know how things are gonna scan or anything but uh, I know that we can we really have that power as humans to organize ourselves it's it's um it's a natural thing, it's a natural ability that we have as humans is to auto-organize because we have to, you know, like the, the red light and the green light. It's like this is, we have to have these things. We have to go, oh, okay, green, we all agree, uh, we go. We have to have that, you know, otherwise we wouldn't function and, and somehow our way is to function. alternative to the austerity and cuts that Europe has has to face or has kind of been made to face. Do you think that's the way that the situation has to be dealt dealt with? Or do you think it's an ideological way to deal with things? Austerity. Yes. Um, well, we know it doesn't work. To make people poorer and poorer and poorer and poorer does not work. Um, and of course, there there has to be alternatives. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I I tend to like um, a model like uh, cooperatives, where where everyone shares on on the profits and shares on the decision making, and everyone's really involved. Therefore in what they do, what they make, and I think it would probably um, increase the quality of what's being made. I, I think there's a problem with making cheap, cheaply made things, made in China or where you can exploit people more. You know, I think um, things could be made, yeah, maybe more locally and um, and with more love and more pr pride and um, and therefore better quality and things that last longer so you don't have to throw it out um, so quickly and um, therefore less of a impact you know in nature and um, maybe if we don't uh, throw away and buy all the time like this maybe it would free up some time as well. People wouldn't have to work so many hours. And because um, I see people who do work uh, nowadays are crazy, crazy busy. Everyone's crazy busy, you know? And it's like, I don't know, it's like you put your finger into the machine and you're all like, you know? And uh, it's it's just insane. Uh, surely there's a balance to be to be had, you know, between um, between work 
and producing and not having this pressure to produce all the time and you know work 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 and you know and having more leisure more um, more free time to to enjoy because I think we we are here on this planet also there's so much to enjoy you know and so much to experience and so much to reflect upon and we don't have time to reflect so it's clack 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 forward 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 and um yeah i think generally we can do better than that mm -hmm.